Welcome back, and thanks for stopping by. On today's show, we're going to talk about, again, electric cars and the consequences of the rush towards electric cars. And by the way, this podcast will not be exclusively about electric cars. I want to make sure of that, but it's just that electric vehicles are so pervasive in the industry. And uh, before we get to that, I just want to remind you, if you're new to the podcast, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like this episode. It obviously helps, and I'd like to keep doing these. So in any event, let me, let me get to it. Um, again, as I mentioned, this channel will not be exclusively about electric cars, but there's just so much in the news. The National Association, the National Auto Dealers Association met last week in Las Vegas. And what did the auto dealers throughout the nation speak of? It was, again, electric cars, because there's just the manufacturers are so rushing towards electric cars that the dealers were concerned, and that was just so much of what was discussed um, what, it, what it means for the industry, the training that will be going on, and so forth. But again, we have a lot more, <laughs> a lot more topics to cover as I move forward. As we get out of the, get out of the winter and into the spring and summer, uh, I'm going to be going to car shows and highlighting some of the great cars that are at the car shows. Um, also, I'm going to do a, a bunch of stuff featuring, featuring rare automobiles that, that you don't see every day. Uh, other cool cars, and I'll also try to do some some point of view driving in in again maybe in my Hellcat and the Trackhawk and other vehicles that uh, <laughs> that I'm allowed to drive. But in any event, if you have any suggestions, put them down below in the comments. And also anything we're doing in this podcast, please comment, and we'll we'll try to get to it. And I'll take your suggestions, and and again we can start the discussion on what we're what we're speaking about. Um, in any event. The, what was in the news this week that sparked me off again regarding electric vehicles is that Maserati, Maserati is planning to go all electric by, um, I, I can't even remember the year, I think it was fully electric by 2030, that's not that far off. And again, Stellantis owns Maserati right now. Stellantis is over many of the beautiful nameplates, including Jeep and Dodge, which affects me. The Mopar nameplates are now... Uh, under the Stellantis umbrella. Stellantis is, again, a European, mainly a European-run um, auto conglomerate, and Maserati is under that as well. Now, when you think of Maserati, what do you think about? You see a Maserati go by, and you hear this unbelievably beautifully tuned engine. I mean, it sounds like a concert when that, when that car is going by, and that is because Maserati uh, mostly have Ferrari engines in them because um, Ferrari and Maserati share um, an engine plant in, where is it? They partner together to build engines in, in Maranello, Italy. So basically Maseratis are Ferrari engine cars. And to take away that, to take away one of, the, one of the major selling points, one of the main pleasures of having a Maserati, it's gonna kill the nameplate. Um, you know, again, it's not all about speed. If you put electric powertrains in these cars, there, as I've mentioned, like I mentioned in the last in the last podcast, there's going to be homogenization within the powertrains of almost all vehicles. There's there's not going to be any difference, and th that's part of the beauty of Ferraris and Maseratis and Porsches. And by the way, Porsche is another one. Their their sales target is 80% vehicles sold will be fully electric by 2030. Fully electric. I mean, again, Porsche is another car company, a high performance vehicle company that basically it's all about the engine. Porsche engines are just beautiful. And of course, Porsche's handling is unbelievable too, as, as, as many others. But if you take away the, the engine from a Porsche and just put a homogenized electric powertrain, then, you know, you might as well be driving, driving a, you know, a Ford. Um, and again, the Ford Mustang Mach-E's are very, they're great cars for an electric, but again, it's, it's so much different from from a gas powered car but again you know there's just such a rush to, in the industry towards electric cars they're not even they're not even considering what the consumers want you know basically this is run this is driven by governments um, not only in the United States but worldwide that are just pushing towards all electric they want to get out of internal combustion engines as we've discussed in the past internal combustion engines are so clean they're so efficient now, not like they were 50 years ago. They're beautiful cars, beautiful engines. 
and beautiful powertrains. And again, they're efficient, they're clean, and it's all about the powertrain. Take the Ford Mustang, for example. The Mustang engineers tried to have the EcoBoost four-cylinder, and they tried to kind of go away from the V8 Mustangs and into the Ford EcoBoost because they were fast, but it wasn't the same. I had a, a five-liter V8 high-performance Mustang way back. It was I, I actually had two 80s uh, vintage Mustangs with the five-liter engine, and it was a totally different animal from the four-cylinder or the six-cylinder Mustangs. It was a different car because of the engine. Same thing with my Grand Cherokee. I, a, a Grand Cherokee, a run-of-the-mill Grand Cherokee driving down the street with a V6, that's one thing. But I have a Trackhawk. It's a supercharged V8 with 707 horsepower. It is a totally different animal. It's not the same car as the Grand Cherokee dropping kids off at school in the morning. It's all about the engine. And I'm really you know, fearful that the industry is rushing towards electric vehicles, not because of demand. It's not market driven. It's driven by governments that are pushing the industry and, and increasing regulations to basically try to put internal combustion engines out of business. And if you, I studied in business when I was in business school years ago, um, if you look at the product cycle, the, the, this is a new product, electric vehicles, and whenever you have new products, a new industry, you have a, a, you know, a run-up towards, towards uh, gearing up towards selling, in this case, electric vehicles. And there are going to be lots and lots of car companies getting into the business. And as that life cycle hits maturity and saturation, then you're going to have, you're going to have a, a, a market where all these companies that got in originally and had all kinds of investment dollars, they're going to all go out of business. There's going to be a shakeout in the market, and then you'll have a few left that sell electric cars, including probably some of the big, big car companies that are already in the business. But in any event, um, it, it's sort of similar to, if you all remember, the Internet companies, um, they, you know, whenever you started a company and it was about you know, some kind of an Internet based company, then you had investors just flooding to give you money. Even though you weren't making a profit, even though there was no proven business model that you were going to make money. So we had, you had all these companies rushing into the market. And what happened, you know, after a while, there was a shakeout. All these companies went out of business and you're, you're just left with a few the big tech companies that are kind of running the internet now. So again, this is, I think, similar to what's going on with electric cars. Um, right now, the, let, me, let me see if I can find my statistics here. By the end of, by the end of la last fall, there were about 20 new nameplates of electric vehicles in, in the industry. By the end of this year, there are going to be 40 electric vehicle nameplates many of whom you've never heard of, um, many of whom you have, Lucid, Rivion, um, Polestar, which is part of Volvo. But in any event, there, by the end of this year, there, it's projected there are going to be 40. And by the end of next year, that's going to double again. There are going to be a projected 80 vehicle companies, electric vehicle companies, that come into the market. So it's classic. It's a classic, um, it's a classic uh, uh, product life cycle for a new product. And when those car companies, they're not all going to stay in business. Most of them will go out of business. But you have all kinds of people throwing money at these companies and investing. And they're just not going to make it. And uh, I, I want to make it clear. I'm not anti-electric vehicle. I think there's a place for electric vehicles. But I am anti-mandate electric vehicles. There, there can't be a mandate. It has to be market driven. There's a place for electric vehicles if, for example, you want an electric car to commute and you have a short commute to work that's within uh, the, the range of your batteries, you go to work, you come home, you plug in at night, it's great. However, if you go to work and then you decide, well, hey, you know what, I think uh, I, I just got a call. My friend that lives 40 miles away invited me to dinner. You can't just jump in your car and go there if the range isn't there or if you forgot to charge your car up that night. So, so again, there's a big limitation. If you want to go on long trips, it, there's also a big limitation. Because, it, yes, if you're charging your car at home at night, it's relatively inexpensive right now. But if you have to charge at these commercial charging stations, it is very expensive. They, the commercial charging stations are private. 
they can charge whatever they want and they are very expensive and um and also the you know they're they're starting to proliferate so they're they're starting to be in many locations but again very expensive and if you're going on a long trip and you want to take your electric car not only will it be very expensive as expensive as gasoline but you're going to have to sit there for you know as long as it takes to charge your car up if you don't have a super fast charger charger a super fast um charging car you're going to be there for a few hours and that's not going to work every few hundred miles. So again, there are limitations. Uh, I think electric cars, again, are great for commuting if you have a short commute and you're not going any place far after work. But it should be market driven. There should be many types of cars out there for sale, electric cars, gasoline powered cars and whatever else. I also want to answer uh, a, a viewer's um, comment from my last episode. The fact is that, hey, this is a new technology and, you know, maybe he didn't use this word, but maybe you're a curmudgeon. You just don't like new technology. You're not comfortable with it. Um, that's not true. I'm a tech guy. I love technology. Um, electric cars are not a new technology. They have been around as long as vehicles, as long as cars have been around. Um, when, when cars were first coming on the scene, they tried all different methods of propulsion. There was the internal combustion engine. There were steam engines, similar to the locomo steam locomotives that the railroads had been using. That's the Stanley Steamer. That was, that was, um, that was um, you basically came to fruition when cars came, came out back in the early 1900s. Also, electric cars. There were electric cars back then. It's only now that battery technology has started to improve, but it was basically the same technology. And as a matter of fact, I saw that there was an electric car in the 1880s the first electric car, I think it was 1884. Um, I'll, I'll have a picture up here. See this picture here? <laughs> That's, that was the first electric car, and that was a long time ago. So no, I'm not anti-technology. There's more technology in internal combustion engines, actually. But in any event, um, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Again, I'm not going to always talk about electric cars. There's going to be a lot more. There's going to be a lot of stuff outside. You know, once winter goes away, spring is coming. Summer will be here soon, and I'll be out of the studio and outside doing stuff. One thing I just did want to mention, non-electric, is that General Motors a while back started shipping out vehicles. There's a, there's a chip shortage, and there's been a real um, bottleneck in getting vehicles produced, and one of the reasons is because of the chip shortage. So General Motors started shipping out cars with some chips missing that could be installed later for non-critical systems. Ford is going, going to start doing the same thing. So it may be chips that heat your seats if you have heated seats or a heated steering wheel. And there may be some other systems as well uh, that aren't critical to safety. And then when the chip shortage starts to wane, then they'll ship the chips to the dealer. The dealers will install and, and then your car will be good to go. So, uh, so that's it. That, that's all I have for this week. I want to thank you again for, for coming to this podcast. And again, remind you, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Hit the notification bell so that you'll know when I put up a new, a new uh, episode. And like this episode, make comments, let me know what you think, um, and so forth. And I'll see you next time.